My name is Isaac Lawn, and this is your Morning Aid to Navigation. What I wanted to talk about today is why failure reveals God's power and love for us. First off, we want to talk about how the world sees failure. So, especially in the military, uh, we live in a very performance-driven place. We all feel the pressure to be successful and to avoid failure pretty much at all costs. And we also know how the world sees us. Failure reflects on who you are and whether in the military you are deemed valuable. If you're not able to complete your qualifications or uh, do the tasks that have been assigned to you, and if you always seem to be coming up short, eventually the military is going to say that they don't want you anymore. But that's not how God sees us, and it's also not how God sees failure. I want to talk about a story in the New Testament about Paul. It's Paul's thorn in his flesh. So. Paul has some kind of moral failing or some habitual sin uh, that he continues to struggle with. It's the thorn in his flesh that he talks about. He continues to ask for repentance and he, and he says, God, why can't I get rid of this? Why can't I find success? Why am I always failing? And in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10, uh, God's answer to him is, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, so Paul goes on to say, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So how does that make sense? When I am weak, then I am strong. As Christians, our strength doesn't come from ourselves. In fact, uh, Christians recognize that we aren't able to succeed alone. And when we rely on our own strength, uh, we deceive ourselves into thinking that we don't need God and we only set ourselves up for failure. We are only strong when we give up on doing things in our own strength. We recognize that in our own strength, we're never going to be able to succeed how we want to. We need to trust God instead of ourselves. But there's a second part to this verse that I want to touch on as well. God says in the beginning, my grace is sufficient for you. What this means is your worth doesn't come from your own performance. God declares that he has made you worthy and that his grace is sufficient for any failures that you may have. So why is failure okay? Well, failure doesn't change how God sees us. God loves you when you do well and when you do bad. So stop worrying about failure or how others see you. If you're a Christian, then you're loved by the creator of the universe. His love for you doesn't change whether you succeed or whether you fail. I'm not saying in any way to try and to just slack off or not try to do your best or to do well. God clearly asks us to give our all and he says to run in a race as if you're going to win a prize, as if you're trying to get first, you're trying to do well. But at the end of the day, whether you succeed or whether you fail, his love for you will not change. He's like a father whose son is a runner, and you know that runner may do well in a race, he may do poorly in a race, but that father doesn't love his son any less or any more based on how his son performs. So focus on doing your best, but never let the times you fall short, which will be often, determine who you are. Never make them your identity, because your identity is rooted in the love that God has for you, and the fact that His grace is able to endure any failure that you have, and that you'll be able to be forgiven when you fall. Thank you.